You probably wouldn't recognize Joe Cipriano on the street unless he starts talking. His voice is one of the best known in America. Make a resolution to watch TV's number one comedy. What's going on out here? Two and a half men. The first new episode of the year. This might have been the worst date of my life. Did she talk you into putting on one of mom's dresses while she stole your wallet? No. Well, then this wasn't even your worst date this month. Tonight at 9, 8 central, only CBS. Cipriano has worked for most of the major networks. He's been the voice of the Grammys and the Emmys. He's written a memoir called Living on Air Adventures in Broadcasting. Joe Cipriano, welcome. Thank you very much. You know, I had to double check what I'm wearing because normally when I see your faces, I'm in my pajamas and I have a yeah. cup of coffee. You're saying you do that stuff at home, actually. Yeah, exactly. We do. We do all of our, our work from home. I get to go into CBS Television City as often as, uh, as possible because I... I, you know, I grew up here on the East Coast and wishing uh, that I would move to Los Angeles and get to go on the lot. And now I get to go to Television City. You anyway. actually started when you were 14 hanging out mm -hmm. in a radio station? Yeah. I, I called my local DJ in Waterbury, Connecticut mm -hmm. and happened upon a, a great guy who invited me to come down to the radio station. And I hung around there until I turned 16 and, and I was hired on the air as a disc jockey. I got to say, it's so interesting. I never expected your speaking voice to be the same as your narrating okay. <laughs> voice, but they are very much the same. How do you develop the skill, though? Because I think yours is one of those jobs that everyone secretly thinks, I could do that. I could try yeah. that. And you know what? It's true. I mean, any voice can work. And uh, it's more about interpreting the copy and those kind of things. And I think naturally, the more you use your voice, mm -hmm. the deeper it gets. There are tricks that you can do. There's like a, a, a little, um, what you do is you count to 10. And on the odd numbers, you use your deepest register. And on the even numbers, you use your highest register. And what does so that do? Once you reach 10, you'll find your real voice. Oh, that's interesting. Interesting. So, so how did you, when, when did, did you, did you start developing your voice at like 14, 15, 16? Yeah, I, I think so. I think it, again, it naturally happened. And you know, yeah. being young and on the air like that, I didn't know what the heck I was doing. And that's what the book is all about, living on air. I grew up on the air. I mean, I'm not a journalist, so I'm doing a top 40 radio show and you have to do one minute of news, you know, when you're doing your show. Sure. But it was 1970, 71, during the Vietnam War. I had no idea how to pronounce these battlefields in Vietnam. And running back to the studio with the copy, it's like, oh, gosh, I don't know what to do. And I start reading it on the air, and I come up to a town that I don't know how to pronounce. And I did what anybody would do. I just reached over and turned the transmitter off the air. <laughs> <laughs> then turned it back on after 10 seconds and said, that's news. Now let's look at weather. What I found interesting in the book is that you talk a lot about trends. Mm -hmm. And I was surprised to hear that there are different trends for what voices are popular when it comes to narration. Yeah, that's, that's so true. I mean, you know, back in the day, um, first of all, if, if you look at, at voiceover, it started with the big, deep voices. Right. And Don LaFontaine, who's famous for in a world where <laughs> one man, you know? And, and actually those big deep voices in broadcasting early on were necessary because the equipment and the technology was such where you needed a big voice to cut through and get through the static and things like that. And then as, as technology grew, uh, younger voices and wanting to match what, the, what was going on in pop culture. And that's why, you know, I don't have an incredibly deep voice. I have what's called more of a, 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 a natural voice, how which did, kind of fits in. Joe, how did you make the leap, though, from being a disc jockey to yeah, voiceover? I, I was, uh, I become aware of these big voices, the voices of ABC and CBS and all the different networks. And I said, you know, I want to, I want to be involved with something like that. And I was just on the air uh, in Los Angeles, uh, filling in for a guy on the radio, doing a top 40 radio show. And the head of uh, marketing of a television network was stuck in traffic and heard me on the air. And he said, now that's a voice I think could work and called me in and shows like Everybody Loves Raymond on CBS, you know, changed my life. The book is Living on Air, Adventures in Broadcasting. Joe Cipriano, thanks so much for being thanks with us. Thanks very morning. much. And don't forget, Monday, it's an all new Mike and Molly. <laughs>